Welcome to Keeping a Notebook, a series of short writing talks where we can keep notebooks together. I'm Amy Ludwig Vanderwater, and I'm really glad you're here. Betsy the Writing Camper is glad you're here too. I'll be speaking to you from inside Betsy. Yesterday, our cat Minnie Monster followed me over to Betsy the Camper. He's never done that before. He just popped in for a minute and then jumped right out. Hello, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. I today have a couple things to share with you. First of all, yesterday we talked about making our own notebooks and I had folded together a lot of pieces of paper and I want to show you how I sewed them. You could actually use a stapler or connect things another way, but sewing is a good skill to learn and this is a very easy thing to do. So I have sewn it together here. You can see the inside, you can see the outside, but I want to show you with another one that has fewer pages because it took me a long time to poke the hole through page after page. So here we go. What I did here, these are just, this is just three pieces of paper. This is called the pamphlet stitch. And you can use more pieces, but then you'll just have to slowly move your needle through. So I can start on the outside or the inside middle hole, depending on where I'd like the little dangly strings to end up at the end. So I think I'll start on the outside. So I've already poked three holes here. One, two, and three. And what I'll do, and what you can do if you wish to make a notebook like this, or even just a long card or a comic book or anything, is go through the middle hole on either the inside or the outside. I've tied a knot already in the end, and then come through, pull, till the knot stops. Then the thread will be here. I'll go into the top hole or the bottom, it doesn't matter. Pull all the way. Then I turn it around. I go back in here where the hole, where the knot is. So I'm going to use the same holes, only the same three holes. Go through. There it is. Here it is on the inside. I will now go through the bottom hole or the top hole, whatever you choose. The last empty hole. There it is on the outside. And here it is or the inside and here's the outside and then I'll take my needle off and I will tie these two pieces together. Now I'm thinking it might have been nice if I had left a longer tail the first time around because if I had then what I would have been able to do is I would have been able to hang a couple of beads from the end and that would look kind of nice if it was the outside. Now I don't need to do that on this one because I'm actually going to use that Raisin Bran cover, which I haven't done yet. But you can see, here it is. It's tied. It's all nice and secure. And I have a little notebook. Today is the book birthday of my newest book with illustrator Ryan O'Rourke. It is a companion to our Read, Read, Read. Here's a poem from the book. Timeline. I was a new writer just learning how. I scribbled, I drew, I listened, then wow. I sang all the letters, I matched them by sound. I used finger spaces, I moved words around. Best of all, let me tell you a secret I found. Writing a sentence is building a tower, block after block, hour by hour. I am a writer, and writing is power. I'm calling today's Keeping a Notebook Writing Talk, Learnings. The poem Timeline is about learning how to do something new. And so today's writing exercise I'm calling Learnings. Here's what I did. Oh, upside down, I need to put some kind of title page, I think. So here's my quote collection from yesterday. And then today's exercise, what I did is I thought about things that I have learned to do in my life and also things that I still would really like to learn how to do. And I made a little list of them here. And in a way, it might have been even better if I had started on a new page so I could keep adding to this list. So I'll probably do that later. So I have, I made a little double entry journal of things I have learned and things that I want to learn. And here they are. I have learned how to bake bread. There's a funny story related to that. I've learned how to knit in Denmark. I've learned a lot about poetry from my teacher, Lee Bennett Hopkins, who passed away last summer, and I think about him all the time. I learned how to make pie crust. I learned how to stand up for myself. And so those are a few things I've learned, and there's lots of things I still need to learn. And some are, I want to learn to draw better cartoons. I want to learn about gardening and houseplants. I want to learn how to meditate and how to understand and know the constellations in the sky. And I'd like to learn how to make pottery mugs sometime. I've tried that and it's a little tricky and I think I need a lot more practice. So 
I looked at these and oftentimes I do make lists in my notebook and they help me make choices. And I decided of all these things that what I decided would be the most fun to try now would be to write the story about learning how to make pie crust. So I circled it and then here it is. I'll share it with you. So I love to bake. I bake all kinds of cookies and I love a good challenge. I love to roll out sugar cookies and to decorate them with all kinds of sprinkles. When I lived in Denmark, I baked bread and loved it even when it didn't turn out so well. It's fun to make pretzels and cinnamon rolls and baking does not scare me, except for pie crust. I was always scared of pie crust and I have no idea why. That's just the way it was. But we like pie over here, so I still make it. I just buy the crust in a rolled up tube in the refrigerated part of the grocery store. In our family, we have jokingly called that Aunt Pat's recipe because Aunt Pat, like me, loves to bake, but she buys crust too. Lots of good people have offered to help me to get over this fear, but I've never learned. Well, not until last Thanksgiving. This past Thanksgiving, Georgia invited her friend Bella over. Two days before Thanksgiving, we were to make pies, two pumpkin and two caramel apple. But when I went to purchase all the ingredients, nothing in the crust space, nothing at all. Well, only air. On my way home, I stopped at a couple of other shops and even at a gas station with a mini mart. No luck, but Bella was coming. Thanksgiving was coming, and we were making pie. Homemade crust was my only choice. I've heard the expression, if you can read, you can cook, many times. And I dove in, chilling what needed to be chilled, mixing what needed to be mixed, and taking every alphabet letter of that recipe very seriously. Bella and Georgia chopped apples and mixed sugars and spices, cracked eggs and stirred as I focused on the mission, Pie Crust 2019. And guess what? I did it. Our pies were delicious. Two pumpkin, two caramel apple, and while no one else probably would have noticed the homemadiness of the crust, I kept saying how proud of me I was, so they knew. That expression really is true for lots of foods. If you can read, you can cook. So when I hear someone tell me they're afraid of baking bread or scared of making strawberry jam, I can now look at them straight in the eyes and say, I used to be afraid of pie crust. I understand. So this is sort of a fun exercise for me. And if you want to try it, all you need to do is think of either things you have learned to do or things you want to learn how to do. You could make two lists or just one, totally up to you. And then pick one and write long about it. And you might want to draw a picture to go with it. Or you could even, you know, draw a lot of pictures to go with it. I think I'm going to add some color to these pages coming up. And I still am thinking about the cover. So happy writing today. Thank you so much for joining me and Betsy the Writing Camper. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Illustrator Ryan O'Rourke made this adorable template for the pencil butterflies that flit through our book. You can find and print it at bit.ly slash butterfly pencil. Let your words and pictures fly. I hope to see you tomorrow, and if any of you wish to share your pages, please have permission from a parent or guardian, and you may do so with their help at hashtag keeping a notebook.